All right, hello, and welcome back to my 2.5D RPG in Unity tutorial. Uh, sorry the episode's a day late. It's just that I wasn't happy with what I'd made yesterday, so I remade it, and now I have to record today on Thursday. So, yeah. Uh, today, we are just doing a quick one to... Uh, basically, we're making a, a script that will help us track objects between scenes. So, say if you were doing a quest in one area of the world and you had and that had like a say an objective that would take you to kill an NPC in another part of the world. Instead of just not being able to find the NPC, instead what we'd do is we'd look through this list here of stuff and it would well basically tell us, alright, the NPC we're looking for isn't in this scene. So we just say, alright, go to whatever scene it is in and then do the objective. So that was basically the idea. And I'll show you how it's done now. Okay, so the first, oh, the main part of this script is called, well, it's, sorry, it's called, the main part is the ID scene tracker, which is a script that sort of works both as an editor script and in the game. So the reason for that is, so, because while you're actually making the game, you know, you're creating quests and scenarios and levels and shit like that you'd be adding npcs and assigning them ids so a useful thing i thought would be to have is like it automatically stores an id so at the start of the game you'll have a written list of ids that uh this the game can reference if it's looking for say a specific npc and where that npc was last seen or where it starts or whatever and at the same time if you were say creating npcs on the fly like in the game like a say in Fallout New Vegas, you can get uh, like hit squads sent after you uh, based on your reputation with faction. So they'll have a unique ID, but they'll be created on the fly rather than being created in the game. So what I've done is in the editor, uh, the uh, script will like listen. It will watch out for new IDs being created while you're like just in scene view. So thanks to this uh, execute in edit mode. A uh, little tag thing there. Uh, once, I, if I'm like moving shit around in the scene view, it will call the update function. But it'll also work in the game. So yeah. Uh, and but since uh, what's the word? I'm looking for yeah. But we'll need a place to store the ones we find in. Uh, the, or we need a place to store the IDs originally. Uh, when we're making the game so that it can be referenced on every build of the game rather than just on a specific location on the hard drive on our computer sorry so that is where uh, our scriptable object comes in in the form of an id container so what this is is literally just a list of strings that stores our data and this little bit here allows you to right click uh, and create uh, well, an instance. So I'll just show you that now. So, yeah, so this is our scriptable object here. As you can see, it just contains a reference, uh, a list of strings which contain the ID of the object, a uh, semicolon to split it, and a the scene name where it was, where it starts, was last seen, or something. And yeah, so if we just right click, uh, create, and then if we, we have ID container at the top, and if we do that, it'll create a new one. And that is just assigned, assigned, sorry, that uh, ID container is just assigned to this new prefab I've made called blah, 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 ID Scene Tracker. Now, this will be need to be in every scene. And what this will do, so like I said, uh, while we're in the editor, the data gets written to there. But once we're in uh, the actual game, or once we're in a build, sorry, it'll write it to a text file, or it will always start off with the data that's contained in the scriptable object. So we have a base of like all the uh, NPCs in the game to sort of start from, if you get my meaning. So yeah, now let's get on to the actual code. Okay, so first off, uh, we just got a normal singleton setup. So if this is, if me equals null, me equals this, and we'll try and read IDs from the file. Otherwise, uh, 
we just destroy this game objects because we don't need more than one instance of this. Uh, we can just carry it through the scene using don't destroy and load if uh, so if the game is playing. But uh, since you can't use don't destroy and load on uh, in the editor, we just need to make, uh, do a quick check to check that the application is playing first, just so we don't call that. Uh, next up, we have a list of strings called ID Data Store. Uh, this is basically just a list of all the IDs that have been found, uh, whether it be uh, in the current scene or within the file or the scriptable object, depending on what you're actually what part of the code is executing. And likewise, we have a list of strings for the scenes, which is basically just. Uh, the list of scenes. So say you had a an ID at index zero, then index zero in this list would be the uh, scene that it was last seen in. Okay, uh, first we have uh, our method for reading in the ID file. So if our application isn't in the editor, then we find the serialization controller uh, and we try and uh, get our path to the ID store text file. So, uh, yeah. So basically we just use system.environment.get folder path, my documents. And I just added this check in because sometimes it was returning null for the serialization controller. So we're using RPG tutorial save 001 ID store.txt. Uh, so you'd have to replace that with your own uh, folder path for whatever, wherever you wanted to save the text file to store the IDs in. Otherwise, we're just using the uh, one we can find from the serialization controller if it's not like null for some reason. Uh, next up, we initialize these two new lists called red IDs and scene ID is in. Uh, we've got a string line, which is just null. Uh, there we get a new stream reader, and remember to use the stream reader. We need to use uh, using system.io. And what we do is we go while the uh, line is equal to file dot read line. So this will basically just grab lines out of the uh, file passed in at this uh, path. And while that line is not equal to null, it will take the line and you call it into uh, pass it into this parse data method, which uh, well. Uh, so, where's the uh, scriptable object? I'll just show you how the data looks. Scripts. Since the data all looks like that, so it's basically an ID, semicolon, scene name, uh, what we do is we just uh, return data.split with a semicolon there. Uh, what that does is returns just two elements string array with the scene name in element zero, in element one, and the, uh, the actual ID in element zero. And then we add into red ID if split.length is equal to two. Uh, if we add uh, red IDs to, we add split zero to red ID, sorry, and split one to uh, scene ID is in. Uh, we just have a little check here to make sure that we've not got any kind of incorrect data, you know, for whatever reason. Then once we're done with all that, we call file at close and we set ID data store to be ready read in IDs and scene data store to be scene ID is in. If we're not in the, the editor, how, if we are in the editor, however, uh, it's actually a bit simpler. Uh, again, we've got two lists called read IDs and scene ID is in. But in this case, we just go through our editor store.data. Remember that it's just a scriptable object, which contains a list of data. Uh, again, we call this split method. And if split.lemp is equal to two, then we add them to the respective lists. And then once we're done, we set those lists to be uh, red IDs and scene IDs in. That's that. Next up, we have our method for writing the data to a file. So what we do is we take these two lists, so ID data store and scene data store, and we're basically just going through each of the strings in ID data store. We're creating a composite string of uh, the ID and the scene data store with index, and index is just an index that starts at zero. Then we're adding them to this uh, composite list, which is basically just the data. 
and we increment index so we know that we're getting the right uh, scene out of the scene data store. Now, if uh, the application is the editor, it's not the editor, sorry, uh, we find the serialization controller. Uh, again, we do this, uh, we just get the uh, scene or the file path for the id store.txt. So, and then we just call file.write all lines with the id scene store and composite list.toarray. And that will write all our. Uh, all our data on IDs and the scene they are in to that file. But if we are in the editor, it's just a simpler, just write it to the uh, scriptable objects that you have. Okay, so next up we have our update method and just a timer. Uh, it's basically just timer, make sure that for every, every second, well once every second, we find all the object IDs, and if the two lists are null, then we set them to be new lists. And then for each of the object IDs in the scene, if the we call this if oh, is ID in file, and we pass in the OID, and what this does is it goes through each of the strings in ID data store, and if the ID data store index here, so basically it's just an index that counts up as we go through the list, equals what we've passed in, then we return true. So saying that yes, this ID existed, or exists currently in the list. And if we go through all of them without finding the ID, then we just return false. So in this case, if it returns false, that we passed in, we're saying, all right, this ID doesn't exist currently in our list of IDs that we have stored. So say it might have been just recently created or what's the word? Uh, or might be like generated procedurally while playing the game. But for whatever reason, this object is then added to the ID. So is added to the ID list and then for the scene data list, we add the current scene. But if uh, if this ID does exist in the list, so if we've encountered it before, or it was one of the ones that was generated while creating the game, uh, we just do a quick check. So we grab the current scene that the ID is in. So basically what this does is again, as an index, goes through all the strings in ID store, and if the ID store matches, if the ID at the in the ID data store at index matches the ID we've passed in, then it will return the scene at in scene data store at index. And otherwise, it returns, it increases the index. And if it doesn't find anything, it just returns not found. So if current scene is not found, then we just uh, create an error. Otherwise, uh, if the scenes are different, so if that object is, say, moved to a different scene because it's a companion following the player or whatever, then what we do is we get the index of that ID and then we change the scene data store index to be the current scene uh, just so we can update it. And that's that. And also, we reset the time as one. And if the application is in the editor, uh, we'll then write the ID to the file. Uh, but if the application is playing, uh, we don't do that because uh, it'd probably be a noticeable performance hit if we had enough IDs. So what we'll do is we just load them in when the scene is loaded, and we will write them once the uh, scene is changed. So that is done via the serialization controller, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, so we got uh, just a couple of changes to the serialization controller as well. This basically just calls uh, the uh, read and write methods when uh, the uh, game is playing to make sure that all our ID tracking is updated appropriately. So first off, in file initialize, uh, when we're checking to make sure that the actual file ID uh, the uh, ID file exists. Uh, we're 
the first thing is we're using a different path because we're wanting to have it sort of independent of the different scenes. So we use system.environment.get folder path, get the my documents folder, and we just have the game directory and the save directory rather than and we don't have the get active scene name like the other files do. Uh, and again, we just have a check here, file.exists equals false, then we create the file. But also, since when we're initializing the file now, we also uh, copy the data from the uh, serializable object. That, oh, scriptable object, sorry. Getting confused. We're copying the data from the scriptable objects we made over to this file, just so it can start, and then we don't need to like worry about the scriptable object anymore because we'll have all the same data copied into the text file, which will be easier to access. And likewise, on our serialized, serialized data method, uh, we just have a quick thing here called idscenetracker.me.writeid to file, write to id file, and that just calls the write to id file, and then we'll write all the data to the uh, file. That's pretty much it. Uh, and again, I believe there was something else, was there? Oh yeah, uh, on level finish loading, uh, what we do here is, <coughs> sorry, it's off road today. Uh, we just uh, read in the file again. So uh, when the level's loaded, we'll go through the, 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 ID, the IDs in the level and make sure that if we have any new ones, that they are probably, yeah, yeah add it to the list and we read in from the file and make sure everything's good. So yeah, that was it, aside from this one objective that I added to show that it works. So basically what this does is I've added two new boolean uh, variables to the objective kill someone script. So I've got a boolean for is object in the current scene, that'd be false. And I've got a string for scene the object is in. And what we do is, is it on is objective done? So if the objective is not done, we use the id scene tracker dot me dot gets I, uh, scene id is in, and we pass in npc underscore plus target id. So with the id that we're looking for originally, and we just add npc because we know we're going to have to kill an npc. We can't kill a container or something. And if the scene dot get active scene but name is equal to the scene that that object is in we set is object and current scene to true otherwise we set is object and current scene to false because it's not and if the objective is not in the current scene then we just return false because obviously we can't do an objective if the target isn't in the current scene and likewise for get objective text we return if the object if the object is in, is in the current scene, we just return the original one, so object text plus HP plus the health of the target. Otherwise, we return go to whatever scene the object is in and kill the target ID. I'll just show you this works now. So we'll go into this load test, click load. And we'll see here, if we go to quests and kill him, we'll see that it says kill NPC combo example HP 100. Or if we go to the dead city and we hold press tab, I will see that the quest now says go to plague desert and kill PD1. And if we go back to here, we can check, see that uh, NPC PD1 is in the plague desert in this uh, in the ID container here. And likewise, if we check for NPC, I believe it's this one. Are you PD1? No, your PD0. Where's PD1? NPC combo example would be PD1. Yeah. So we've got to kill this NPC here. And yeah. So that's pretty much it. We've got a nice, simple way to track NPCs across uh, scenes uh, that updates automatically while you're creating a game, as long as you have the uh, prefab in the, uh, in the scene. And yeah, so cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I'm on Patreon now. Uh, you can get early access to the project files as well as access to games I make and other stuff, which I'm going to start doing. So yeah, that will be linked in the description as well. Go by loud or quiet and stuff. Uh, yeah.
Cheers for watching and goodbye.